No, 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 let me stop you. SeasonDeception.com, everyone. You've got to take control of your life now. You've got to go check this out. You've got to at least start trying to discover how to eat organic. Now, I want to expand on this, though, because the feds have tried to come in now because we forced a lot of stores to start adopting organic or at least non-GMO, you know, which means it's not organic practices to give you the plant. It's still pesticides and things uh, for listeners that don't know, but at least there's not... It's not a chimera. It hasn't had genes shot into it, so it's at least a little bit. I mean, pesticides are a lot better than you know some little bacteria that's been GMO'd. But now they're coming in trying to, as you know, I mean, I'm telling the listeners this, trying to change it where they can certify something organic if it's 75 percent uh, uh, altered. Uh, they're trying to not let milk companies and, and 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 cheese and yogurt from the products say we don't have these dangerous uh, uh, hormones uh, uh, that have been synthetically made that are making three-year-old girls and mass go into people. Liberty now. I mean, all of this is happening. And of course, that's the good news. We're waking up, taking action, so they're fighting back. And then the even bigger threat on top of that, you know, after you explain to us how they're trying to block us and how we can fight back, is that if we don't stop them now, we only have, you know, a few dozen things that they've planted worldwide on, on a mass scale that we're now eating. As he said, the seven major food crops. The problem is they've got thousands of labs integrating into, uh, you know, trees that produce oils, essential oils, into grasses, into everything. You say, well, I don't eat grass. You're going to breathe that. And and grasses and things are designed to spread. They will get outside the fields. I, I mean, I know I'm shotgunning myself here, but, but, but that's what goes on in my mind. Yes, in fact, the pollen issue is a problem. In the Philippines, they found that a certain variety of genetically modified corn that produced its own toxin um, apparently was responsible for skin, respiratory, and intestinal reactions and fever in five different villages that planted this genetically engineered variety. It's the BT yeah. killing the bees. Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, it's also, that's a possibility, although I wouldn't say it would be the primary cause because there's some bee deaths in, in, uh, in countries where there's very little acreage, but it could be a contributory factor, and yes, the genes do transfer to gut microorganisms inside the bee, and yes, but when they, when they take the pollen from these pesticide-producing corn plants, their immune system is compromised. Yes. So yeah. um, getting, getting to... Uh, some, some more information about how to avoid eating genetically engineered foods. This also relates to that milk issue that you talked about. Yeah, let's talk about there that. Is a, there is a, a genetically engineered drug called recombinant bovine growth hormone, RBGH, or it's also called RBST, and it's from Monsanto. And uh, this will take a long time to discuss all the details, but essentially they inject it into cow, dairy cows to increase milk supply, the, most, the biggest health concern is that the milk has higher levels of a hormone called IGF-1, and that that is very deeply linked to cancer and an increased rate of fraternal twins. And right now, because the person in charge of policy at the FDA, when that was approved, was Monsanto's former attorney, they don't require labeling of dairy products when the cows are injected. In fact, if a company wants to label their product as, as made without the use of this drug, that uh, Monsanto has sued companies to say that it's illegal. Now they're trying to get states like Pennsylvania, Kansas, Utah, Indiana, Missouri to make it illegal for dairies to label their products as free from the use of this hormone. In a supposed it's free society, they're suing and blocking. And I remember four or five years ago, you'd see it on the milk. Suddenly, that's off the milk. Well, what's happening is, because in the last two years, there's been so much consumer education toward the tipping point to drive this off the market that about 40 out of the top 100 dairies have committed to stop using RBGH in some or all of their products. And that includes Starbucks, who took it out of their company brands by the end of last year, Kroger's that took it out by last by this And month. this is the good news, is that uh, and you and others, all of us together, we're having a victory. It's fantastic. In fact, you know, the tipping point concept is very real. In the 1999... In January, a biotech company was was projecting a 95% takeover of all commercial seeds within five years. But within a month, their ideal future crashed because a food scandal erupted about GMOs and GM food safety in Europe. Within two months after that high-profile event, in a single week, virtually every major food company in Europe committed to remove GM ingredients from their European brands because it had become a liability because consumers were taking steps to protect themselves. My organization, the Institute for Responsible Technology, has a plan in place to achieve that same type of tipping point in the U.S. 
before the end of 2009. Simply by informing consumers about the type of health dangers we've talked about today, plus many more, and putting in their hands a non-GMO shopping guide so that they will shift their purchases to those wise companies that don't use GMOs, making it a marketing liability for those that do. And let's be clear, this is literally life and death. The biosphere is, is, this is the real environmental crisis, not plastic bags, not the greenhouse. That's all because they want a global tax in their own documents. Meanwhile, we're rushing towards oblivion, uh, and, and, and they're, this revolution of wild, open, reckless genetic engineering is just exploding. Can you briefly speak to, we've got to stop them and slow them now? Absolutely. There's 172 different species that have been field trialed in the United States alone. That means that they have a version of a genetically engineered food of, to, to replace virtually all the natural food on the shelves and in the gardens and in the fields. Now, they're trying to introduce the next major crop in the United States for the first time in over a decade, genetically engineered sugar beets. The sugar beet industry wants to plant them starting this year, which will contaminate the sugar in the United States and around the world by the end of this year. So we are in a in a very pitched battle right now to stop the introduction of GMOs and to demonstrate to the food industry that GMOs in general are going to be a very rapidly a liability for selling. And, and you so haven't even gotten into how, what, 90-something percent of the ancient Mexican corn crops have been infected with just one Monsanto variety. You haven't even gotten into how these GMO crops are taking over the original crops. Yes, that is, that's for some of the real bad news. Yeah, we're going to have to have you back up for two hours in the next few weeks. Uh, this is unbelievable. Final segment with our guests. we got listeners wanting to know about the uh, doomsday vault that the uh, elites have built. You know, this is all so wonderful. Why have they done this? With our amazing guest, his new book is Genetic Roulette. Get up, stand up. Folks, I want you to know something. Stand up, boy. This is not my opinion. I've probably had 50 genetic engineers and scientists on this show. And we're going to have more and more on. Get up. And the gentleman you're listening to, he's giving you what's documented, you know, what he can conservatively say. Uh, it's, it's even worse. I have children, and I'm telling you, they have no future. Yours have no future if we don't turn this around. And I want you to get his books. I want you to get his videos. they got some very good packages at their website. And I want you to show, have showings at your library, everywhere. we got to get mad. And tell all the environmentalists who've been caught by the corporates. See, the corporates know there's people are waking up, so they give you little, you know, light bulbs and bags and band bottles. Dioxin's bad, folks. It's nothing compared to this. This is the big issue. Uh, would you say, because I really see you as the preeminent expert, Jeffrey M. Smith, would you agree with the statement I just made? Well, absolutely. I'd say genetically engineered uh, organisms are one of the most dangerous health and environmental threats faced by humanity. I would also say it's one of the easiest of the major problems to fix in terms of the food supply. But how do we deal with these psycho companies? What's wrong? I mean, I know Monsanto in 99, it was in major magazines uh, like National Geographic. Remember when they came out and said, our plan is to contaminate everything so you won't have a choice. I'm paraphrasing the quote. <laughs> yes, indeed. In fact, um, a friend of mine was was uh, debating with someone from USAID in South Africa, and when the TV cameras went down, they continued to argue, and at one point she said, you just wait, we'll have so much genetically modified corn in South Africa that no one in Africa can plant non-GM corn. <laughs> it, was by, it was contamination by design. Good God, we've got to have you back up soon. Uh... I've got Daniel Eslin from Spain joining us, but can you stay? Uh, we're about to break just another five-minute segment, five minutes into the next hour, or do you have to go? Sure, I can do that. Okay, good, because I want to plug the book again. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't cause a massive awakening now, this is going to get firmly entrenched, spread throughout the biosphere, it's spreading into other plants already. In fact, it always does. Uh, the mindset of these companies, though, how are the people that work at them so evil? Now, don't they care about their own families? Well, you know, I, I, uh, I interviewed someone from Monsanto who had left the company, and he was recruited in 97 
uh, and he actually evaluated the words of the then CEO, Robert Shapiro, who promised great things for the world from genetic engineering. It impressed the heck out of this guy. And so during the employee orientation in Monsanto's headquarters, he waxed philosophical about what he was doing for the world. He got pulled over after the meeting by a vice president and said, wait a minute, what, what the CEO, Robert Shapiro, says is one thing. What we do is something else. We're here to make money. We don't even know what he's talking about.